In today's video, I want to go over all of the books that I read during the month of November. So hello my fellow fantasy book lovers and welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy and I love reading fantasy books. During the month of November, I read a total of five books and I actually started a sixth, but there's no way that I would have finished that during the month of November. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about each book that I've read and what I thought about them. For starters, I finally read this absolutely gorgeous book. This is The Stars Are Dying by Chloe C. Pinaranda. And I personally gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. In this book, we follow our main character. She's called Astria and she is kind of locked up in this house uh, where she is part of... You kind of don't know what's going on at first, but you will discover more and more that it's kind of like a brothel type situation, or at least they have entertainers that entertain the visitors of said house and her boss or the person she is chained to is not the best word. She's not really tied to him in any way, but he keeps her locked up. Um, he actually is kind of not the best type of person. Why else would he lock her up? But Astrea, the main character, doesn't really know much about herself and she discovers more about that through the story. I did enjoy the romance line of this story. We have the main character Astrea and then the other person who she encounters very early on who is called Night. Night, Darkness, Astrea, Brightness, Stars. The second kind of main character in this book is her seemingly love interest. You notice from very early on he's called Night. And you will see as the story develops that Astrea and Night have this connection that they maybe did or did not know about before meeting each other. In this book, we follow our main character as she breaks free from where she's being held captive. As our main character breaks free, she goes to her best friend who is supposed to participate in this type of Hunger Games situation contest. And she ends up participating instead of her friends. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I did love this book. I did like this book. Why did it only get three stars from me is because the pacing was so slow. If you like slow books, this is 100% for you. I really did like the characters. I really did like the setting. I just wished that it was a little bit faster paced because then I think this book would have gotten a five-star rating from me. And yes, there is a fair bit of romance and spice into the book as well. The next book I read, I actually don't own a physical copy of yet. It is ordered. It is the Fairy Loot exclusive editions of Iron Flame. I personally loved Fourth Wing and I finally have a Fourth Wing copy somewhere in my background. I received it today, the day I'm recording this. And if you didn't love Fourth Wing, then I'm not sure if you would read Iron Flame, but I personally did. And I think that the series is living up to its hype. I also think that the writer Rebecca Yaros is such an amazing person. She's so funny. Like all of the interviews I see by her, she's so like good at explaining some things, but also leaving us kind of in the dark about other things. Unfortunately, book three of this five part series is only going to be released by the end of next year which I'm not super happy about because I have to wait an entire year. And again, the first book ended on a plot twist and a cliffhanger. The second book does as well. I kind of love it and I've kind of hated it. Um, the thing is, I like plot twists and I like when there is like this huge change of pace, etc. But not at the end of the book if the next book isn't out yet. If it is the end of the book and the next book is out, I will almost immediately start reading the next book. But if not, I just get a little bit frustrated. Um, I do actually really love the book. My partner is currently listening to it on the audio version and he's also really enjoying it. So yeah, for us, Iron Flame is a big win. And I obviously gave it five out of five stars. After Iron Flame, I was very much in need in some lighter literature and I picked up this book. It is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. I had seen this in my local bookstore, didn't really think much of it until one of my friends actually read it and told me it was hilarious and I should definitely pick it up. So I did. Now this book follows a witch who has magical talents but not in every aspect and her family kind of wants her to be good at everything. And at the beginning of the book, she accidentally 
suddenly summons a demon and she cannot get rid of the demon until she makes a kind of pact with him in which she kind of sells her soul to the demon in this case. She doesn't want to do this. She never wanted to summon a demon and the demon is kind of like baffled by how she didn't actually want to summon him. The thing is they can't get rid of each other that easily so he stays with her and as an excuse to tell her family and friends why she has this person in their house she tells them that they are dating and that's what this story continues on. They obviously because that's the type of book it is. They actually develop feelings for each other. It does get spicy at some times. I really enjoyed it. It was more of an airy read. It is not purely romance focused. There is other things happening around it that actually gave this book so much more depth. And the second book to this series is also out. I've ordered it because this is just like something that I love as an in-between read, in-between heavier books. So if you're into romanticy and you want a fantasy setting with a witch and a demon, highly recommend this one. Up next is another book that was released in November. This is Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. If you enjoyed Legends and Lattes, I'm pretty sure you will enjoy Bookshops and Bone Dust. In this book, we follow the same main character, Viv, who is actually in battle, gets injured, and then needs to rest into a small town until she has like healed more um, so that she can re-enter the group of warriors that she's in basically. In that town it doesn't seem like there's a lot happening but of course there is something happening in that town as you will discover later on in the story. I personally really like this. There is a little bit of romance going on. There is a little bit of everything. There's mythical creatures. There's a little bit of suspense. There is a mystery. I really enjoyed it and of course like a big part of this story plays into a bookshop and it makes me want to open a bookshop so I think that Travis Baldry again made a really good um, low-key fantasy book. This book has a little bit higher stakes than Legends and Lattes but still it's very cozy fantasy. I finished this in like a week's time I think because I wasn't really reading super much so even if you read slowly I think you will really enjoy this book. And the last book I read during the month of November is Assistant to the Villain and the book goes about what the title says. We follow a girl who becomes the assistant to a villain. The book starts very abruptly with the main character who is looking for a job. You get like a situation layout of she has a family that's kind of fallen apart. She still lives with her dad and her youngest sister. Her dad is severely ill. Um, he cannot take care of his kids. So she as the oldest child um, actually works and gets in the money so they have food etc. This is kind of more a medieval setting if I'm not mistaken. It's the way it feels at least. So you have a tavern, you have like this villain character, you have the castle etc. So we follow Evie. Evie is the main character and then the second main character in which we also have a few chapters is the villain. We follow her as she works for him and they actually discover that a few of the things that the villain has plotting have been going against him and there is a mole. So someone within his company as we're gonna call it is actually leaking out information and she's trying to discover who it is, what's happening etc. I really enjoyed this book. Um, it took me a few days to get through it because even if I felt highly connected to what was happening the stakes weren't high enough. And that's something that I personally wish for this book is that it was a little bit more fast-paced. We spend a lot of time in situations that I don't feel were exceptionally necessary for the book and for the development of the book. And there is a book two coming out I think early next year and I really want to read that as well because book one again ends on a plot twist, ends on a situation where you really want to know what happens. I had the same with other books that I really want to know what happens next even if I didn't really love love the book. Um, I think this was very enjoyable if you're more into a light read. Um, it is in the same genre as A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon and I personally would highly advise if you want to read this book to wait until book two is out because the ending of this book just oof I just want to know what happens. I hate when books have like a too abrupt ending. I also had this with Iron Flame. I just want like something that you can build on in the next book but also that feels like you can peacefully leave this book behind and read the next one after it even if there is a month or a year in between the books. So therefore I gave Assistance to the Villain a 3 out of 5 star rating which is still pretty good in my opinion. If I really don't like a book I will just DNF it or give it a 1 star 
And now that we've actually gone through November, I can reflect back on the fall TBR list that I have made in the month of September that was for October and November, because I did list a few books in there that I really want to read, and I want to go over them and see if I've actually read them. And the first two books on my list are actually books that I haven't read. The first one was Masters of Death by Olive Blake. Um, it is still in my bookshelf. I have it. I have it on my e-reader even. And still, I haven't actually taken the time to start reading it. Same goes for The Luminaries by Susan Dennard, and there is a reason for it. Recently, I've been getting a lot of uh, book review information about other books that also have a similar setup. It is a village, people can't go outside of it, something mysterious happens, the main character needs to know what is happening. I am just like, this is just like the movie The Village. And I feel if you do it once, fine. If you do it twice, sure. But like right now, I think there's three books that follow a similar setup. And I just don't know if that's what I want to read right now. I have the book. I will definitely pick it up at some point. But right now, it's not really what I'm feeling that I'm into and that I want to read. And then up next are the books that I did finish from my fall TBR list. It was God Killer by Hannah Kainer, The Stars Are Dying by Chloe C. Pinaranda, Divine Rivals by Rebecca Yoss, Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros, and Bookshops and Bones by Travis Baldry. And two of those books are actually new releases that only released in November, and I'm really happy that I was able to read them as they came out. Um, Iron Flame, because I know that there was going to be a lot, a lot of spoilers. If I open TikTok right now it's full of them and I'm very happy that I finished the book that I can just like if I see them it doesn't really matter too much but if you're one of those people who doesn't want to get spoilers about books then don't go onto TikTok or on Bookstagram right now because it is full of Rebecca Yaros which I personally love but if you haven't finished the books yet might not be the best thing Feel free to let me know in a comment down below if you've read one of these books, what did you think of them, or what other books have you read during November, because I would love to know. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye!